Welcome back to Questing Beast. I am Ben. Today we are solving one of the great eternal questions in role-playing games, which is which RPG publisher has the best logo? I know you've all been dying for me to make a tier list of this, so I am finally going to oblige you. And to determine which of these logos is the very best, we are going to use the best metric of all, which is my own personal opinion. Uh, my opinion on these has nothing to do with whether I like these books or not, whether I think you should get them, is just my personal take on uh, which of these logos looks cool to me and which is the most iconic. All right, without further ado, let's jump in. Uh, first of all, we have a Bastion Land Press. This is Chris McDowell's company that creates things like Into the Odd. I really like this logo. It's uh, nice and simple. It's easy to read. Ba the Bastion Land part is. Press is kind of small. Um, but the narrow figure standing next to this column or this sculpture looks really good on the spine of books, which is a big part of what makes for a good logo. So I'm going to put this in good for sure. Maybe great. We'll see if that moves around later. Uh, next, we have AGEG. This is Alderac Entertainment Group. They've worked on a lot of different RPGs and collectible card games. Uh, I'm not really feeling this one too much. It's very plain. It's very easy to read, which is good, um, but it doesn't really stand out. It's not particularly evocative of role-playing games. So that's going to go down in meh. Um, Atlas Games. This has a little bit more character than what we saw in AEG. Um, the kind of the jumbled letters, it has a more interesting font, um, but it doesn't really speak to me all that much. Uh, it doesn't really grab my attention. So yeah, let's put that down in meh for now. I, I have a lot of these logos, just so you know. I got most of the major companies and probably some indies too. We'll see how far we get through these. The next one we have is uh, this one from Burning Wheel. It's a burning wheel, as you might expect. Looks really great on spines, is very recognizable which is great for a logo. So, you know, I'm gonna put this one up in great. I think that is a fantastic logo. It's just, it pops, it grabs your attention and it's easy to remember. Uh, I have a bunch of different TSR logos here from how their logos evolved over time. The first one is one of my favorites. This one is the wizard logo. It's just a black and white wizard. Look at this dude. It, it's clearly drawn by just some guy and it has that homegrown uh, feel to it. And it looks just great. It's very recognizable. Look at, even at a small size, you can see that silhouette that tells you that it's a wizard right away. I like that a lot. I'm going to put that up in great, I think. I would be really happy to see that on the side of a book. Uh, TSR, this is another one. Um, it's not as good. The font is not as interesting. It has that cool Moon Man logo, which I like. But taken as a whole, it's kind of, uh, it's meh. It's going to go down there, I think. Um, Stockholm Cartel, this is the Swedish group of RPG creators. They made a lot of books from there. I think they worked on Morkborg. They probably did, as well as a bunch of other books. It has that kind of black metal twisted letters feel going on there, um, which is definitely visually interesting. It's not super interesting because it just, it looks like a black metal logo, which is fine. But I think I'll put it at good for now. Um, KG. So this one is, I think it stands for Kane and Gygax, or I think that's what it stands for. It's uh, Gygax's early uh, company before he founded TSR. And it just has these old timey logos. It's nice that it could be hand drawn. I'm not totally sure about that, but it's not super readable. And it looks like something from, I don't know, the 1800s. So I'm not a huge fan of it. I'll put that in. It's not, that's not great. Uh, I'm gonna put it down in nah. I don't really like that all that much. Now, next we have another TSR logo. This one I really like, uh, and I'm not sure if it's because it's a great logo or just because it appeals to me. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it screams the 80s at you really loudly, which is what the TSR always stands for in my head. And, you know, I think I'm gonna put this one up at Iconic, our first Iconic. I love the red dragon, how its body turns into a snake. I love how metallic it is. It's just extremely extra, which really works for, I think, what TSR stood for in that era. Uh, here's another TSR logo. This one is sort of a tablet. It's in an interesting logo, but it, it doesn't really grab my attention too much. It's a little bit bland, a little bit hard to read. So, you know, I'm gonna put that one down in meh. Uh, Catalyst Game Labs, I believe they work on uh, games like Battletech. And it's it's a well-executed logo. It has that little, um, what do you call that? That vial there, beaker, uh, because it's a game lab. So that kind of ties together there. But it's really not all that interesting. 
it's um, it has one idea in it and it kind of executes that idea, but not too exciting. So let's make that, let's say that's a meh. Uh, Chaosium, this is a very classic logo. So this one has this you know, ancient dragon, it's done in black and white. I love how the font of Chaosium is very you know dripping and evil and it's not a professional font by any means. It looks like it was probably hand-drawn, but it really gets that HP Lovecraft feel across, which is all about uh, what Chaosium does. So I really like this logo. Chaosium is uh, great. It's very iconic, easy to read. It's gonna go in iconic, I think. Um, all right, Cubicle 7. So this, they do a lot of different licensed RPGs over the years. And, you know, I, I don't really like this logo all that much, to be perfectly honest. It's very bland. And from looking at it, it doesn't even say gaming company very loudly. And that's an, an issue I have with a number of these that you couldn't really tell what this company makes from looking at the logo, which is an issue when you're creating a logo. Uh, so I'm going to put this down in nah. Yeah, I think that's where that belongs. All right, we have a whole bunch more logos to go, but before we do, a quick shout out to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Into the AM, my favorite purveyors of fantasy and sci-fi graphic t-shirts. They have been sending me these t-shirts for years now, and they have lasted me a really long time. They stay very soft and very comfortable. They have great deals too, where if you check out their web store, they often have uh, packs of t-shirts in three or six, where you can get them for around $17 each, which is a really great deal. And if you use my link in the description below, you can get an additional 10% off of the entire web store. These are some of my favorite t-shirts. People compliment me on the street while I'm wearing them. It's really kind of wild how much people seem to like them. And they have lots of different designs in fantasy and sci-fi and most other genres. Go check them out. All right, next up we have Evil Hat Productions. And this is a nice logo. It's very clean, it's very easy to read, and it indeed features an evil hat. So it's all tying together there. Um, I wouldn't say it's particularly great. I would say that it's good. Um, it's very easy to recognize and it leaves a, a clear impression in your mind. You're gonna remember that when you see that later. So that's always good. Uh, FASA Corporation, I think how you pronounce it. Uh, they worked on all different sci-fi stuff. I think they worked on riffs, if I'm not mistaken. I could be misremembering that. Uh, it has this very kind of like 80s or 70s sci-fi thing going on. It's not super recognizable at small sizes just because of the, the tiny little letters, but the overall vibe of it, I think fits really well with the kinds of games that it makes. Next up, we have uh, Fantasy Flight here. They've worked on the Star Wars role-playing game and a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, this is a very memorable logo. I've been looking at this logo for a very long time because I am a big fan of Twilight Imperium. I've been playing that game since I was a kid. And this particular logo has always resonated with me. Got the two Fs kind of linked together. It's very shiny. It's very colorful. And I think it's just great. Um, yeah, let's put that one up in great. Flying Buffalo. So Flying Buffalo, I believe, is the publisher of Tunnels and Trolls, the second role-playing game. And I'm not a huge fan of the logo, to be perfectly honest. I mean, it is indeed a flying buffalo. So there you go. It's very cartoony though, which is probably what they were going for, but it's, uh, it feels kind of cluttered and is really not all that striking. So I'm gonna put it down in nah. All right, uh, Free League Publishing. Free League makes a lot of games and they have a very striking and memorable logo. They have this flower, this six-sided flower shape. And the kind of the six sides of this reminds me of hexes. And it has a bit of a gaming vibe to it, but it has a very kind of refined, elegant feel. And it looks really great when you slap this flower logo on almost anything. So I don't know, I'm not gonna say it's iconic, but I will say, I think that it's great. It, it looks very nice. All right, Frog God Games. I like the frog in the Frog God Games logo. He's adorable. You know, it's a giant evil frog. Um, but the overall, the, the font and the design of it feels kind of dated. It feels a little bit bland. You know, I'll put it in meh, um, and I'm not going to put it in nod just because it, uh, it has that nice frog, and I'm a fan of that frog. GDW Games, well, it has games in the logo, but if that word games wasn't there, you wouldn't really be able to tell what this company made. It looks almost like a, a trucking logo or something like that. So that is a nah for me. Uh, Goodman Games, uh, because Goodman Games is known for Dungeon Crawl Classics, it's unsurprising that their logo is incredibly extra. 
It is very detailed. It's metallic. There's a gigantic rhinoceros looking at you for some reason. And that is exactly what I would expect from Goodman Games. It fits their vibe perfectly. So I think that is a pretty great logo, personally speaking. Uh, Green Ronin or Green Ronin. I've heard people say it both ways. Uh, publishing, not really a big fan. Going to put that down in nah over there. Just because you can't really tell what it is. It's a publishing company, but what do they publish? I mean, really, who knows? It almost looks like detective fiction because of the font. It doesn't really tell you much at all. Games Workshop. So this is a very iconic logo. And what I like about it is that it is actually kind of janky. It, the, all the letters are slightly different shapes. There isn't a whole lot of consistency. There's weird bits of them that are like cut out. And it's one of those logos that you would expect them to have updated a long time ago, but they really haven't. It stayed pretty much the same for a very long time. And that makes it even more iconic as the years go by, which I appreciate a lot. Who's next? Hydra Cooperative. This is a small OSR publisher that's done a lot of really great OSR books. I've reviewed a number of them in the past. And their logo with just, it's like a circular sigil with a Hydra in it. And it's a Hydra cooperative because it has many heads. There's a bunch of different people that work there, kind of all publishing their own things and they come together to publish stuff. It's a great metaphor and the logo looks really nice too. I think it could probably use some more color, um, but it's very easy to read. Um, it kind of has two rings going around the outside. Might work better with just one ring because that kind of breaks up the outline a little bit, but it is a really well-designed logo, I think. I'm going to put that up there. I'll put that there in great for now. Uh, the Judges Guild, this is a very old one, uh, very classic, but really not that great as far as logos go. Uh, the black letter font is kind of, you know, crunchy. It's hard to read. It looks kind of vague at small sizes. You can't really tell what's on that shield unless you really blow things up. Everything feels very uh, prickly and sketchy, which is not really what you're looking for in a logo. I'm going to put down there in nah because I'm just not feeling that one. Uh, this is the logo. This is the uh, trilobite from False Machine Publishing, which is Patrick Stewart's company. And I, I absolutely love this trilobite. It is extremely easy to recognize. It has a clear outline and it just screams Patrick Stewart in a way that I can't imagine another logo doing. So this is one of my favorite logos that I've seen in role-playing games. So for me, this is an iconic logo. I really love that one. Uh, next is Lamentations of the Flame Princess. This logo has been around for a long time. And the main issue is it almost looks like a movie title because it's all done in Trajan or a font like that. And it has a lot of very thin lines, so it doesn't stand out very well as a logo. There's no color or shape that's easily recognizable. Although the general shape of the words themselves is pretty recognizable, but there's no icon that for your mind to really grab onto there. Um, and it, it doesn't really say uh, role-playing games as much as some of these others do. Um, the words uh, kind of pull you in that direction. It feels a little bit fantasy-esque, but just the presentation doesn't feel heavy metal in the way that I think the game wants you to feel. Anyway, that's my take on it. I'm going to say this is a meh logo. Um, Last Unicorn Games, not really a fan of this one, just because, I mean, it, it's it's weird in how like thin all of the lines are and how clearly there's a unicorn there, but it's all done in these very kind of, you know, thin lines. It's a very light outline. It doesn't pop or stand out in any very strong way. So I just don't like that one at all. Here is a classic logo from early TSR. This is the one where they just had a lizard man holding a halberd as their logo. And that is a lot of fun. It's just a fun logo. It, I don't know if it works great as a logo. It's a fun illustration though. And there's a lot of kind of nostalgia attached to it. Um, I do enjoy it, but I'm going to put it in the good category because I, don't, I wouldn't feel good about pushing it much higher, much higher than that. This next one is from Lost Pages, which is another boutique OSR publisher, and it is really fun. I think it's a piece of old like Renaissance art, like from an old woodcut that's just been cut out and used as a logo. And it is great. You slap this thing on a spine and there's this kind of antique eye just staring at you. It's great. It's kind of mystical. It's a little bit occult. It's a little bit creepy, but it gets across the feeling of lost pages very well, especially the vibe they have of, of making a lot of spell books and having a focus on that. It just meshes really well with the kind of things that they make. And I am a huge fan. So let's put that up in iconic. Uh, Margaret Weiss Productions, Weiss, Weiss, probably Margaret Weiss. 
I know I should know how to pronounce that, but I don't really. Um, this is not really my favorite logo. It's actually a well-designed logo. And you can tell that thought was put into the layout and, and the, the design of this thing, but it looks almost like a medical logo, right? Almost like a, yeah, a medical instruments production company or something like that, or maybe a law firm. I, I don't know. It doesn't say gaming to me at all. So for that reason, I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. The Milzonian Arts Council has a wonderful logo, one of the best designed that I've seen here. It just has like these six pigs dancing in a circle, which somehow conveys fun. It conveys like an old timey, somewhat strange tradition. It feels a little bit like midsummer, hundreds of years ago, and it's whimsical, it's delightful, very well designed. I'm gonna put this one right up here at the top. It is just one of my favorites. The Merry Mushmen have a fun logo too. It just has these two little mushroom guys holding swords and it conveys fantasy, it conveys fun, which is what you want your logos to do. I wouldn't say it's as iconic, but it is a pretty good logo. Uh, it's either good or great. I'm gonna say it's good for now, might move up later. We'll see about that. Um, we have Modifius here, same issue that we've seen before. It's ha it has entertainment at the bottom there, but it doesn't feel like a gaming logo really. So that's gonna go down here at the bottom, sorry. You know, while I'm looking at the bottom right here, I think Flying Buffalo can move up a little bit. It, it does feel more like a gaming logo in a way that some of these don't. So I'm just gonna put that up there. I think it's a it's an okay logo. Mongoose Publishing. This feels a little bit like Modifius in some ways, but just the, the ring of spikes around the M gets a little bit more of a fantasy or sci-fi feel across. Things are a little bit weirder, which is kind of what you want. So I'm gonna not put it at the bottom. It's gonna be a meh logo, I think. Necrotic Gnome, this one is really fun. You can tell that a lot of great work was put into this one. The word mark itself is fine, but the way that a necrotic gnome face has been distilled down to just a couple of lines where it's like a skull face, but there's a little mustache underneath it is wonderful. Excellent job. Um, I think this is a great logo for sure. That can go, that can go right up there, especially when you just have the face by itself. I always smile when I see that. Okay. Games omnivorous. This one has this little guy with the three eyes. And then in the actual word mark games omnivorous, you can see the three eyes again with the three O's, which is so smart. It's just a great little design right there. Uh, I'm gonna put that one up in great because it deserves it. Good job. Paizo, frankly, I don't really know what's going on with the Paizo logo. It's like a Stonehenge dude who also is doing magic. I don't know. I can sort of see what they're going for, but it doesn't work as a symbol for me. It doesn't really strike any particular emotions when I look at it. I'm mostly just a little bit confused which is not really what you want. So it's not a terrible logo, but you know, I'm gonna put it in, in meh. Okay, now Palladium Books. This one doesn't say, you know, anything gaming on it particularly, but just the way that it has that swoosh going through books and it looks like this sort of glinting metal on the side of a spaceship really speaks to me. Uh, I can see this evoking sci-fi in a very clean way without having a lot of sci-fi elements directly on it. I actually like it. So I think I'm gonna put it up in good. It's a pretty solid logo for, I think, what it's going for. Uh, Pelagrain Press, or sorry, Pelagrain Press. This also looks like a medical logo. It looks like you would see it on the side of a hospital, maybe. I don't know what they were going for here. It, it's a little bit confusing. Is it like a butterfly? I don't know. I think it's the two Ps that are backwards, but it just looks kind of weird. Not really into it. That's going to go down here at the bottom. Pinnacle Entertainment. This one it feels like what you would see in the logo over an old comic book store right? It definitely gets that feel across. So good job on that front. Apart from that, it's not a, a particularly standout logo. I'm going to say it's okay. It's a meh logo, but at least it feels like a gaming logo. Our Talzorian Games. Sorry guys, this also does not really feel much like a gaming logo. It's also a confusing name. Um, I think the backstory for this is that they couldn't decide what to name their company. So they ended up naming it after an investor in the company and that just stuck which is, you know, fine. That's the way that you're going to do it, but it's not a great name and the logo doesn't really say much to me at all. So unfortunately that's going to have to go down here at the bottom. Okay. We have River Horse Games next and River Horse is just the English translation for hippopotamus. So I love that there is a knight riding a hippopotamus on top of their logo. 
Um, I'm not gonna say it's great. This is a pretty good logo. I feel like it could be a little bit more vibrant, especially in the, you know, the letters that they use, the font that they use for River Horse itself. And maybe if they made that uh, hippopotamus larger and more prominent as like their mascot, I think that would work even better. But for now, I'm gonna say it is pretty good. Uh, CNA Nomine Publications, this is the group that does Stars Without Number, Worlds Without Number. It's Kevin Crawford, essentially. And you know, it's a functional logo. It has the name, um, but it doesn't really say role-playing games much to me. And there isn't a lot of flair to it in particular. So I think that's going to have to go down in nah. Now, Steve Jackson games actually kind of have a lot of nostalgic attachment to this logo. I bought a lot of his uh, early games. I remember was one of the first board games I bought it was Ninja Burger, which I believe was Steve Jackson games. And that and his whole Illuminati card game that I was familiar with, I saw people playing that. It's just a, it's a very easy to remember logo. It's the uh, Illuminati pyramid with an eye on it. And it's hard to forget that logo. I'm not gonna say it's great, but I'd say it's good for sure. Troll Lord Games. This one is, it's a bit extra. It's very elaborate. It, there's clearly a lot of work that went into it. I'm not going to say that it's great. It does evoke fantasy very well. So I think that great job on that front. Um, but it's maybe a little bit too busy to be really great, but I have no problem saying that it is quite good. TSR, this is perhaps their most iconic logo. It's so iconic, in fact, that it is often adapted into the OSR logo because there's only one letter difference and they just move you know, their letters around a little bit and you get old school role-playing or old school renaissance. So it is extremely recognizable. That's gonna go right up there at the top. I think anyone who's played role-playing games is gonna have that particular uh, logo burned into their brains. Now, Tuesday Night Games, they create a mothership as well as Two Rooms in a Boom, which are both really great games. I was a little bit conflicted on this one because they're, they actually have a little knight uh, mascot or logo that they use to represent their company sometimes. But whenever I've seen their logo just standing by itself, it's always just the words and never just the knight. I think the knight is a stronger logo than just the word mark. The word mark is pretty good though. Um, it does have a sense of fun about it. I think it's good. It can go right there. Um, West End Games. Um, eh, I'm not really feeling it too much, frankly. It's, is it a meh? Is it a nah? It's somewhere near the bottom, I would say. I'm gonna put it over in meh for the time being, just because it's a little bit bland. You know what, looking at all these, I think it's gonna to have to go down at the bottom. Sorry, that's just the way it goes. Now the White Wolf logo, this one screams 90s more than any other logo that we've probably seen here so far. And for reasons I can't really describe, I really like it. So we're just gonna put that up here in, I'm gonna say it's great. I'm just a huge fan of it. I really can't say why, like I said. Uh, WTF, this is Wizard Thief Fighter. This is uh, Luca Reitz's company that did things like uh, Ultraviolet Grasslands. And it has his very minimalistic style there. It's very much a Luca style logo. I don't know if it's my favorite in particular, but it definitely works for what Luca is trying to make it do. It's slightly off kilter. The way that it's in this brown circle makes it feel like it's part of a planet maybe. And it just evokes these little details that suggest uh, science fiction or fantasy, especially um, arts artists like Mobius and the kind of like French European style of comics. I'm gonna say that this one is good. There we go. Now our two last logos are the two logos of Wizards of the Coast. We have the one from back in the day from the 90s and their most recent rebrand. And I think it's pretty clear where these things stand. The original one is great. That's gonna go right there, up there at the top. It is an iconic logo. I remember seeing this on the sides of Pokemon packs back in like 1999. And it's very 90s, it's very busy. It's got like swooshes and gradients all over it, but it has a special place in my heart. I think it's quite iconic. The other one is the rebrand Wizards of the Coast. And this one is pretty terrible. I'm not gonna say that it's gonna go at the very bottom because those ones don't even look like gaming companies. And this does look like a gaming company but it feels very sterilized, very bland and generic. Um, despite the fact that you can tell that thought went into it. It has the A in the center being like a, a doorway that's opening up, but despite that, it doesn't really speak to me at all. So that's the way it goes. This is a meh at best logo.
So there you have it. That is my tier list for most of the major and some of the minor role-playing game companies whose logos I happen to find on the internet. Uh, put down in the comments below if you disagreed with me, I'm sure most of you did, and how you would rank your most iconic and perhaps least iconic RPG logos. This was kind of a weird video, but I enjoyed doing it. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.